Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to find the perimeter and the area of irregular shapes. Um, these irregular shapes do involve semicircles, so I wanted to show you how to deal with that. So when you have a half a circle combined with another object. Okay, and for these, we are going to use 3.14 for pi rather than using the pi button on the calculator. Um, just make sure that you know that if you use the pi button in your calculator, you will end up with a slightly different answer than you will if you use 3.14. The pi button will give you a more exact answer. Um, the 3.14 will give you more of an, an approximate answer. It's kind of just a matter of preference. Uh, make sure that you look at your directions. If it doesn't specify, then you can probably do it either way. Um, I know that in my classes, I always calculate it both ways in case I have students that use 3.14 and students that use pi. Um, if you are working on an online homework platform, as many students do, just know that if you're getting the answer wrong, then maybe try it with the pi button or the 3.14. And I will show you in the calculator how much of a difference it does cause. Okay, um, it's usually not a large difference, but the more calculations you have, the more likely you are to be slightly off. Okay, all right, so for this, our first figure here, what we have is we have a semicircle on top of a rectangle. Okay, uh, so remember the, per the perimeter is the area or is the distance around the outside. And so for the semicircle, we would use our circumference formula. So we would ha do half of our pi times d. And the reason that I'm using the pi d is because I know that the diameter is 12 inches. So instead of finding the radius and then Converting it back to, I'm going to just do half of, because this is a semicircle, so it's half of the circle, um, times pi times d. And then down here, what we have is because of the fact that we are finding the perimeter not all the way around, we don't have two of this side, we would just do two times our length plus our width. Okay, um, so to find the perimeter, we're going to do one half pi times our diameter, which is 12. Okay, and then we are going to add to that two sixteens because this side and this side are equal to each other, plus this side down here, which is 12. So uh, basically what we did is we just went around here to find the distance first, then we came down here, would give us our first 16, then our 12, and then our second 16. Okay, so you can go directly to your calculator and plug this in. And like I said, I am going to show you the difference of using pi versus not. Uh, you can use any scientific calculator or just basic calculator. So one half, I can type in one divided by two times uh, 3.14 for pi. times 12. So remember, all we're doing is we're putting this in. Let me go back. Times 12 plus 2 times 16 plus 12. And we end up with 62.84 as our answer. Okay. Um, for this, just to show the difference, had I done, and let me go ahead and write that down. So our perimeter for this one is 62.84 inches. Remember that perimeter is the same units as what everything was originally measured in. Um, with area, remember that it's our units squared. So just going back to the calculator, had I um, used the pi button instead of 3.14, Notice that it takes me to 62.849, and so it would be 62.85. So if it tells you to round to two decimal places and you keep getting it wrong and you're putting in 62.84, try changing that 3.14 to pi uh, because it does change your um, second decimal place. So that's the only one that I'm going to show you using the pi versus 3.14. For all of the rest of my calculations, I will use the 3.14 as it's specified in the directions. Um, but I did want to point that out because that is a mistake that I see a lot um, for students when I am doing a unit with this. 
All right, so the next thing that we want to find is our area. Okay, and so our area is if I were to fill this in. Well, if you remember for the top part, because we have a circle, we would do 1 half pi r squared, plus we would find the area of a rectangle, which is our length times our width, or you could use base times height. Either one is acceptable. So I would do 1 half times pi. My radius in this case, remember, is half of the diameter. So that is going to give us six. So we would have six squared plus 12 times 16, okay? And remember for pi, we are going to put in 3.14. Uh, so again, we would just type into our calculator one half times 3.14 times six squared plus 16 times 12, and you end up with 248.52. So this ends up being approximately 248.52 inches squared. If they wanted an exact answer, you would just leave it in terms of pi. Okay. All right. So remember with area, make sure to put your units squared. So let's look at the second one here. So what we have is we have a semicircle on top of an isosceles triangle. So basically it kind of looks like a, um, a two-dimensional cone is what we have. So a two-dimensional ice cream cone is kind of what we're finding here. Um, so remember to find the perimeter we're going to find half of our semicircle, so we would do half of pi d, plus we have these two sides down here, um, so we would do 2 times 10, okay? Um, so if I plug this in, I would do 1 half times 3.14 times 6 plus 20. So if you wanted to, you could just change this to 20, um, instead of doing the 2 times 10. And if you wanted to take the half of 6 beforehand, you could. And you could just do 3 times 3.14. So I just did half of 6 plus the 20 would give me 29.42. So we end up with approximately 29.42 feet. Okay. Um, this one for the area, it is going to be a little bit trickier than the other ones. And the reason for that is remember that to find the area of this triangle part, we have to do one half base times height. Well, something that we can see is that our base of this is six. So we do have the base. So we have to find the height of our triangle. Okay, so one thing that we do know, since this is an isosceles triangle, since these two sides are equal to each other, remember that the height is going to be perpendicular. Well, what happens is that the height of an isosceles triangle does bisect the base. So we know that basically our radius is going to be our length there. So to find the height, we can use the Pythagorean um, the, the Pythagorean theorem. And so I would do 3 squared plus my height squared is going to equal my radius of the triangle. So not the radius, sorry, the hypotenuse squared. Okay, so if I simplify this, I would have 9 plus h squared equals 100. If I subtract the 9 from both sides, I would end up with 91. And my height ends up being the square root of 91. Okay, um, I am going to leave it as the square root of 91 for the calculations. <coughs> so when I'm finding the area, I'm going to do half of my circle formula, 1 half pi r squared, plus the area of my triangle, which is 1 half base times height. So when I plug this in, my radius is going to be 3 squared plus 1 half my base is going to be the 6 and my height is going to be the square root of 91. It's better to leave it as the square root of 91 in your calculations rather than approximating this and plugging it in. The more times you approximate in your problem, um, 
the less accurate your answer is going to be. So you do want to be careful with that. If you are getting it wrong, go ahead and try to do the square root of this first and then put it in as an approximation. Okay, so with this, if we plug it into our calculator, I would just do one half times 3.14 times 3 squared, which is 9. And I can do the 3 squared. I'm just going to put in the 9 plus 1 half times my base, which um, my base was 6 times the square root of 91. Okay, so we do end up with the 0.4275 as our approximate answer. Um, like I said, had I, instead of using the 3.14, had I used the pi button, um, notice that it would have changed it to 42.76. And also, okay, so 42.75 would be my approximate answer. So we can say that the area is approximately 42.75 square feet. Okay, um, with this again, like I said, if you are running into getting the wrong answer here, go ahead and try to find the square root of 91 first and see that it's 9.54. So had I put in this one, had I put in times 9.54, Notice that it's close, and so on this one, 42.75 does give me the same answer um, as we got, but sometimes if you're running into issues, um, it's because of rounding before doing the calculations. The more rounding you do, the more likely your answer is to um, be less accurate. So with this, you do have to do some thinking, especially when you have a figure like this that involves an isosceles triangle and they just don't straight up give you the height. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.